this, this is a moment. It looks like brown <laughs> is smeared on the <laughs> upper ceiling. Yeah, the coving was a bit of an afterthought. I'm f fuming like... I have dreamed of having my own home office for 10 years, ever since I first became a freelancer. And when I started publishing books that were written between my couch and my bed, and then, you know, having my first kid, I was like, yep, yeah, I need my own space. I have been yearning for a beautiful place to go and just be with my brain and feel inspired, feel creative, somewhere multifunctional, with a consistent backdrop for YouTube videos. So this clip was taken eight months ago. The first room that we are going to uh, do up and fix up, this is gonna be my office. And I can't believe I'm gonna have my own office. There's just so much space in here for like bookshelves and a big beautiful desk with facing out to the little secret patch and, you know, possibly a pull out bed sofa thing and that would be my filming background probably over there. Eight months, I said eight months. <laughs> That's how long this project has taken. For all sorts of reasons, money, time, getting hold of tradesmen. I got pregnant and was really sick and couldn't do any DIY stuff for ages. Uh, delays in deliveries, needing to use the room for storage while other house projects were going on. The wait has been so worth it because I'm so in love with this room. I enlisted the help of my friend Kiva. She is my brother's fiance. She is studying interior design and using Pinterest. I was able to share with her like the, the looks, the vibes that I like, the vibes. I've always adored that romantic notion of like a book filled office where writers lock themselves away. And Kiva came up with a vision that tied together so many of the things I love. Here are some before shots, so you can see. This room really had nothing going on at all. It was super plain with old carpet, an ancient window, a dusty light shade, and the walls were the color of we is nine square meters, but I still knew it had so much potential. Like I love the shape of it with the little nook area. This is also the smallest room in our bungalow, so you know, it felt like it made sense to start with this room in case we totally fucked up. The goal with the office was to go bold, you know, and we decided to mix my love of vintage with more modern colours and pieces to create a unique, beautiful room that I'd be just dying to escape to. The first thing we did was peel back the old carpets and remove the skirting board so that plumbing and a new high efficiency radiator and rewiring could all be done. These things had to happen first in all the rooms in the house because it is a 50 year old house. It's old and we're not just doing a decorating job here, we're doing a proper renovation. I'll be going into prices in this video as well, so I'll do like a tally at the end and I'll split like the decor from the full reno, you know. My husband and father-in-law patched up the area around the new double plug sockets so we could later have them switched out for antique brass sockets. And in the middle of all this, we had the new floor put in an absolutely stunning walnut coloured herringbone from the Hardwood Floor Company. Herringbone is so stylish, it's timeless, it brings drama and atmosphere. We absolutely couldn't afford to put herringbone throughout the house and we did get this herringbone on a discount but even still. And I know you might be thinking I'm a crazy bitch covering that gorgeous floor with an area rug and you, you, may, you may be right. <laughs> But area rugs significantly decrease the noise in a space and because this is a room where I'll be filming YouTube videos, I really needed that. This room had a much worse echo before because of the wooden floor. Um, rugs are also great extra insulation. Rugs are cosy. Ireland is cold. Big issue is we actually got the wrong size area rug and well, it's not the wrong size but it doesn't fit under the door. So unless we fancy changing the doors anytime soon, we'll have to get it resized, unfortunately. Paint, let's talk about the paint. We went with teal, this dark blue green. It is the shade Goblin by the brand Little Green, and it's a really rich statement shade. It's so standout, it's modern, it's elegant, it's 
also really soothing and despite how lumpy and old <laughs> the walls in this house are the paint um it just was so pigmented and you know even with that lumpy canvas it turned out so stunning to contrast the teal we went with powdered clay by crown on the new skirting boards the back of the door as well and the ceiling and i love it and i was terrified about this but i trusted kiva jesus like i was mainly nervous about the ceiling because the ceiling in this room is really textured and that's pretty outdated. There's also this one weird smooth patch where there used to be a built-in wardrobe, I think, but I mean, we didn't really have the time or the patience, so I suppose it's a cool reminder that this, it, it's not a new house, it has a history. The paint also went on really dark at first, but thank God, after a while, it settled into the correct color, and I was very relieved. I'm here with my sister-in-law, and we're having a little paint day together. Um, to be. We're just having a mare because the pink that we had chosen, which was this one, for the skirtings and the ceiling, we put it on the ceiling. It looks like poo. What is going on with my hair? I can't be on camera right now. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> This light is not at all something I personally would have chosen because I'm me and I would have gone with a bloody chandelier or something really extra, but I just feel like there's so much going on in this room that it's it, it would have been overkill. It would have drawn the eye away from so many other little beautiful details. And I'm so glad Kiva chose this light. It's a lot more modern and the way it disperses the light is brilliant because it's a, quite a dark room. It's a north facing room. So we're gonna move on to them magical book nook. Apologies if the lighting isn't perfect by the way because I'm I'm new into this room. It's literally just done. But yeah, this is not just a book nook and is not just a video background or just somewhere to sit and have tea and a snack. Um, this is also gonna double up as an extra place for guests to sleep because the couch is a pull-out couch. It is actually a lilac, but I think it works so well with the pink. It's so soft and it's really easy to fold out and I just love how retro looking it is. The brand of the couch is Flick and I ordered it from a website called SLF24. Yeah, man, just look at that wallpaper. <laughs> Isn't it? It's just such a sight to behold. This wallpaper is from House of Hackney. It is called Paradisa. It looks and feels so luxurious but I'll be honest, it was not cheap. It was not cheap. Admittedly, there are much cheaper wallpapers and if you're renting, you can do a project like this using peel and stick wallpaper. Because the wallpaper was so expensive and because I've never done wallpaper in my life, I, um, I hold my hands up, I begged, I begged my husband to offer himself up as tribute to do this wallpaper for me. And he did, but it was a messy, sweaty, ordeal and he was so, yeah, he was so, so stressed. It was stressful and I was sweating and it took 10 times as long as a professional, but I took the road less traveled and that saved all the money. It actually ended up being a bit wonky at the top up there and that's why we ended up going with the coving so like using this trim around the entire room um it was all to hide like the bit of wonky wallpaper but i'm so i'm so glad we we did it it really elevated the space so much the trim looks amazing but it was so finicky these are all from a local hardware shop these ones are pieces of trim so they're flat on the side and they're a little bit they've got this kind of decorative detailing on them that's really nice but what these are going to be doing is separating out the wallpaper from the paint so just kind of making it into like a little nook and then these are pieces of coving this bit slots into the corner um or is it this bit yeah so they're going to be painted pink and we'll see how it turns out You 
may or may not know that old houses have really wonky walls and ev just everything is so wonky. It definitely didn't go on perfectly. And also the glue stuff meant that all of the cracks between the trim and the ceiling had to be caulked and then repainted again, which, you know, it just, it adds on a lot of time but it made a really big difference to the overall feel and look of the room. These shelves were an entire project alone. I have never in my life refinished shelves and I don't think I did that great of a job. If you look up close, but like no one's gonna be looking up close, even me, so it's fine. It's fine. The shelves are from Woody's. We bought natural wood and decided to stain them ourselves to get the desired look as it worked out cheaper. These were the perfect size for the space. So Thomas, my husband, sanded the wood to get rid of lumps and bumps and chips. And then I took the shelves into the open garage to stain them. Do as I say and not as I do. Please uh, wear a mask and gloves if you're dealing with stain. My baby brain and just having so little time meant that I just completely forgot. Staying safe, my guys. God, I, hate, I actually hate puns. Ignore that, just ignore that. Let's just not include that in the edit. The stain we used was Dark Oak by Ron Seal. It colors wood without hiding the natural beauty of the grain. Each side of all five planks needed three coats of stain. And because you need to leave four hours between each coat, this ended up taking like, a week because I was doing it between so many other things. And then because wood can look a bit dry and lifeless without some, some kind of finish, I went in with a clear coating of polyurethane, which is basically a, a varnish, though I totally forgot to sand the wood after this step, which is why the shelves are a bit imperfect, but I think they're imperfectly perfect. Like I love them. I love that I did them myself. And then Thomas hung the brackets because I'm a little bitch and I'm afraid of screw guns. Uh, the black brackets we used were just from Amazon and I've dressed the shelves. My pretty books, lovely candle scent, you know, like little trinkets and stuff. But I, I think I'll be toying around with how to style these shelves for quite some time and changing the items on display as my interests and my tastes change. Something we totally overlooked when planning out this room was that the windows along the entire back of the house were all really old and needed to be replaced with more energy efficient windows to, you know, future-proof the house and we really should have done that first. We made so much more work for ourselves. So my husband and his dad did their thing and swapped out the windows and, you know, fixed up the plaster and all that. And then I went in and repainted again. There were so many like little paint touch-ups with the weird order we did this room. That's one thing I've learned going into future rooms is to just do everything in the right order because changing the window also meant that the blackout blinds that we bought when we first moved in <laughs> no longer fit. Um, but Thomas did resize them himself very successfully. I was quoted 50 quid for resizing the blind and then another 50 for installation. I cut the blind with a standing blade. I cut the top and the bottom struts with a saw. And I fit it myself. Handy Andy strikes again. Look at that! Yeah. We'll get to the desk in a second, but so the curtains, um, they need to be steamed, but we went with like a, a light, really light curtain. They're cream like the rug. There's a shade of this in, in the wallpaper. It all ties together so nice, but yeah, the um the curtains are from Ikea, where we went to just like pick up a few bits for the room because to be honest, everything was starting to be so expensive and you know, Ikea is very affordable. I say very, it's, it's more affordable than some alternatives. What's interesting to me about the curtains is that they make the room feel so much bigger because of how we hung the curtain pole. It's mounted so high. This was Kiva's idea again. She she sent me like a little drawing of how high to mount them like two to three inches below the ceiling and I was like that just sounds wrong like how that's so high it's actually really outdated to like hang your curtain pole right over the window I just love it though and the curtain pole is gold and you'll notice like the accent color for the room is definitely like goldy brass anyway the desk the chair I just love this setup um I really hope I write several novels 
sitting here. The desk is antique. We found it on an Irish website that's like Facebook Marketplace. It's called the Dun Deal and the guy who sold it to us, his dad had bought it at auction like 15 years ago. I love the curved legs. It feels like something you'd see on the crown or something. And I love the handles on the drawers. There's actually a ton of drawer space, which makes this really functional. And the pattern on the top just screams J or, or talking at me. Like the long-term plan is to swap out this red top with like, a different leather like a green to kind of go with more of the room but to be honest I feel so attached to it and I've just tried to add in like red around the room so it doesn't look super out of place like even this this little um tin box I've had this little tin case with like a fairy in a Christmas tree on the front since I was really young and I always fancied filling it with chocolates and having it as like a fancy chocolate box like you know in Matilda the Trunchbull has this like box that she has all these nice chocolates in. I just love the idea of coming in here and having a little Lindor you know. The lamp. The lamp was a Facebook marketplace find. It's a rise and fall brass desk lamp from the 1920s so you can like adjust it to lower it down or bring it back up and the finish on the brass is beautiful. It's actually really like the feet of the chair. The chair, it's called the Colin office chair from Casey's. It looks vintage, but it's brand new. It's mad comfortable. It swivels. <laughs> um, I had actually bought a chair from Ikea, but you know, with this one, I just saw it and it was like, you know with love, and when you know, you know, you know you've found your person. I knew I'd found the chair when I saw this. I actually saw it on Instagram, I think it was um, Victoria's home account, Fro Home, and she had uh, this chair in her little office set up, found it on an Irish website. I was so happy. We're gonna move on to this side of the room, which I just love, and I'm just switching on the lights, so can kind of see best but like I, I can't cope with how stunning this little wall is this wall that used to be so boring and plain I don't even know where to start I'll start with the mirror okay so this stunning mirror which is like a prettier sexier mirror of Erised from Harry Potter it's actually a brand new mirror it's not an old-timey one though it looks like it this was actually very kindly gifted and uh, I'm just in love with it. I love the details on it. I love that it reflects the book nook and the candles. And oh my Christ almighty, it's so gorgeous. <laughs> so this was not meant to be here, but it looks like it's found its forever home and I never want to part with it. It's like the Weasley family clock, like I could cry. And what I mean when I say it isn't supposed to be here is that we bought these thin wardrobes from Ikea and the plan was to sand them, prime them and paint them the color of the walls so that it would be like a kind of feature of the room, like this kind of built-in storage that it just blends into the wall. I even bought these really cute little brass handles for them. We went through the entire process and then on the second layer of paint, disaster struck. Yeah, and they're appearing everywhere that I'm doing the chicken. I, I, I'm gonna have to take this off the wall. It's just not gonna work, look. I don't know why that's happening. It's just not working out. You can see the first coat here is like real patchy. So obviously we would have needed to go over it again, but it took really well after we'd sanded and, and done the um, undercoat of the primer. But the second coat, not so much. All these air bubbles that look like pimples are just appearing anytime we paint over the paint and I can't figure it out at all and I feel like it's ruined. I was supposed to use a different primer than the primer that we used on the walls. I was supposed to use one for cabinets but look, you learn from mistakes and projects like this but it was really frustrating because 
we had to scrap the whole project and it was so many hours of time and it was like you know even the wardrobes alone 200 euro that's not including paint the handles first things first this is not a real grandfather clock it's actually a film prop we bought it in the same place where we found the chest of drawers from our bedroom it's called the vintage hub which is ireland's largest warehouse of vintage mid-century retro industrial furniture eclectic antiques and the ship worldwide it's such a cool such a cool place but anyway long-term plan is for mr clock to go in the entryway of the house but right now you know we haven't fixed it up to get it working yet it's actually empty on the inside there's loads of space could put shelves in there but it's great storage for my tripod <laughs> it just makes such a statement like it's so cool i'm obsessed obsessed Beside it we have the snake plant that was left for us by the original owners of our bungalow. They're the couple who built this place and the reason I've brought her in here is because these plants thrive in shady areas of homes and the best this plant was ever doing for us was in indirect sunlight. I needed one real plant because uh, you know I'm a real plant gal and you know we've, we've got some fake plants in here. There's one up on the shelves. Nothing wrong with a fake plant you know. Fake plants are great. They're really low maintenance. They don't have seasonal changes and you can kind of pick stuff that goes with the room that you're doing up, you know, but um, a real plant feels like a friend, having a little friend sitting, living in the corner. Last thing then really is this wall, which is blank right now. And I was gonna put something here, like it's bare as an arse, but I think maybe there's just too much going on in the rest of the room. I did decide to display my Harry Potter school trunks. <laughs> These were gifted years ago, but you can find them on the Harry Potter shop online still um but these just go with the room vibe you know and yeah i'd started a little gallery wall over here but i just had this nagging feeling like it was overkill so we're, we're going to be creating a beautiful gallery wall in the front hallway so do subscribe if that sounds like your jam um i want to make loads more videos like this but yeah i had this poem from the wonderful lena norms to hang and also the one time i was ever a magazine poster but i figured like i know a lot of actors and stuff but you know there are movie posters on their walls but i just thought that was too narcissistic and if anyone was sleeping here and they saw my twilight ass red haired posy terrifying face staring down at them judging them <laughs> that they'd never want to come back. <laughs> my husband had this hanging on his wall when he was training to be a pilot in Spain. So we have a lot of funny memories attached to this. But yeah, no, the, there'll be art going in here eventually and this poster is gonna be hidden in the attic. Finally, as promised, I wanted to go over costs and this is the easiest way really to, to do it. So I have, I've been keeping notes of like, you know, everything obviously that we paid for, <laughs> It's just, it, things seem small, you know, individually, but when you add them up, it is terrifying. The full room was around six grand. And now I know that's kind of shocking, but I would say this took eight months. And also I've been building up to this for 10 years. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's something I've been saving for, obviously. As I explained, there's definitely cheaper alternatives to like stuff like the wallpaper, even the paint. Like we went with a very like fancy paint, but a lot of people doing a project like this wouldn't have to change the window and do plumbing and wiring and plastering and skirting and a new floor. And when you take that stuff away, it's less than four grand. But uh, yeah. And the main reason these numbers are so wild to me is because we did so, so much of the work ourselves, like stuff that a lot of people would typically hire other people to do. But I just, I have to say like the biggest thank you in the world to Kiva for helping so much with pulling everything together, helping to source so many of the things. My husband, my husband was just unbelievable and like killed himself to get so many things in this room done. Everything from like the constant trips back and forth to the hardware shop and like driving us to go and pick up furniture and then my father-in-law was unbelievable like he was so keen to help get this room done and even when he wasn't helping like he let us use a lot of his tools and um even like the plumber the electrician they're people we know they gave us good prices and like it was a massive group effort um i haven't had a holiday in in years you yeah, know i think i deserve to to splash on this room and at the end of the day like this room it was always going to be the room in our house where you walk in and you're like ooh, expensive like 
we're not going to be going so lavish i don't think with the rest of the house so do stick around for those renovation videos i'm very excited about them um but yeah like this room is essentially serving as a set because i make online content and also it's to inspire my creativity and i think it will because it's just absolutely beautiful so that's my office i really hope you enjoyed this video it took a long time to put this together so please like it if you liked it for the algorithm also i'm doing a little secret giveaway for people who watched the whole way through i'll pick the winner in one month it's international and basically if you comment what your favorite individual thing in the room is in a comment down below with three green love hearts i will know you've entered the giveaway so then i can reach out to one of you also please leave the at handle of your instagram so i can get in touch don't share your email address because people will just steal them and send you loads of spam but yeah the winner will get 200 euro to spend on facebook marketplace to try and find some amazing unique cool piece of furniture for your own room, your own renovation. I just think that'd be a nice, lovely little thing to do. Seeing as I got that beautiful mirror for free, I thought like I'd take the value of that and give it to one of you guys. So I'll see you in another video very, very soon. I'll probably be even more pregnant and breathless in that one. So long, farewell, off you to say goodbye.